You all know that single-use checkout plastic bags are now banned, so what are your alternatives? In this episode, we're going to cover technical highlights of the SUP ban on checkout bags and the three types of bag options you can consider, including a special offer just for you. How you doing, folks? Je suis Ilash P. Et you're watching Food Packaging TV, where we bring you the latest in innovation, industry news, and of course, food packaging. Now let's hit it! So, by definition, in section B.11, a SUP checkout bag is defined as 1. A plastic manufactured item made entirely or even in part by plastic that is formed in the shape of a bag that's designed to carry out purchased goods from a business and 2. Whose plastic is not fabric, meaning it's not made from natural textiles such as cotton or jute. And 3. Whose plastic is a fabric meaning it's a combination of plastic and textiles such as a synthetic blend of polyester and cotton that will break or tear if the bag is A, used to carry 10 kgs over a distance of 5.3 kilometers, or B, will break or tear if washed once, meaning a complete full cycle of washing and drying in your standard home laundry washing and drying machines. They do have an ISO protocol mention, but that's the nutshell. Generally, single-use plastic checkout bags are typically given to a customer at the point of sale to help customers carry their purchased goods from the business, of course. This definition also includes plastic bags used to carry or deliver takeout food or drinks from a restaurant. From a restaurant. A restaurant. And other terms used to describe sub-checkout bags include shopping bags, carry-out bags, and grocery bags. Mm -hmm. So now that we know what types of plastic bags are banned, Let's go over the other types of plastic bags which are not prohibited. In the next section, like the three sectional plates, B.1.21, it indicates the following types of plastic bags that are not impacted by the regulations as it relates to food packaging. So, bags intended to hold organic waste meant for composting, such as compostable bin liners. Now, remember this point. It's going to be very important later in the video. Bags to hold items intended for garbage or recycling, Commonly used in households for commercial recycling or landfill waste, aka garbage bags. Bags to package fruit, vegetables, candy, grains, nuts, and other loose bulk food items. Commonly used in grocery stores known as produce bags. Bags to package meat, poultry, or fish, whether they're prepackaged or not, such as vacuum bags. Bags to protect prepared foods and bakeries that are not prepackaged or could be packaged, which are bread bags. So what are the alternatives to these plastic checkout bags? Because that's a great question. And I'm going to cover, or we're going to cover, three of them today. The first one, fabric checkout bags. Two, paper craft handled bags. And a three, compostable t-shirt bags. So let's begin with number one, the fabric checkout bags. Now, there are two types of fabric bags. Those that are solely made with natural organic fabrics or textiles, such as cotton and jute. And two, those that have a combination of natural and synthetic textiles, like the ones we mentioned earlier, the polyester cotton blends, as an example. As noted previously, you can use natural fabric bags without meeting any other criteria, such as passing through a laundry cycle once or going through a strenuous farmer's walk of 5.3 kilometers, as these bags can be composted. But if you decide to opt for the synthetic blend of bag, then you'll have to prove that your bags can take on a standard cycle of washing, which is including the drying, and maintaining itself to the farmer's walk of 10 kgs for a distance of 5.3 kilometers without breaking or tearing. Mm -hmm. Fabric bags are lightweight and a cheaper option than craft handle paper bags. They're a lot easier to transport, stock, and store compared to the paper bags. And for the customer, they're much more easier to fold and reuse and if you happen to make a mess inside a bag, well, you can always run it through the next load of laundry instead of tossing it out. Next at number two are the paper craft handle bags. You can also get them without handles, but they're not as easy to carry out your purchases, especially if you have multiple bags to carry. Paper bags are actually not a true eco-friendly bag. In 1959 in Sweden, a gentleman named Sten Gustav Thulin, sorry if I said that wrong, who actually invented the plastic bag as a replacement for paper bags in order to stop cutting down trees. That's right. So Mr. Thulin's idea behind the plastic bag was to create a bag that was strong, lightweight, and you can reuse over and over and over again. That would be better for the environment. 
the inventor himself would carry around a plastic bag in his pocket and use it whenever he needed it. Sadly, we're back to square one using paper thinking that's the environmental best practice when in reality, plastic bags were so convenient that we as human beings just got lazy and instead of reusing them, we just threw them away once we were done with them. Plastic bags were not meant for single use, but they became single use, which is why we're at this crossroads today. But there is a better way, a much better way, which leads me to number three, compostable t-shirt bags made from PLA. Now, I did an episode three years ago that you can watch here about the merits of compostable t-shirt bags versus the plastic and paper bag. The conclusion was that if they ever had an all out plastic ban on t-shirt bags, which we do now, that the compostable t-shirt bag would be the best solution for all parties involved, including the environment. And who are all these parties? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you. It's the importer manufacturer, the restaurant or retailer that gives the bag at the point of sale, and the end user who brings it home and then he can reuse it. And of course, for the planet that we all call our home. And here's how it breaks down. Compared to the paper bags with handles, here's how the compostable bags stack up. The benefits to the importer or manufacturer. Let's cover transportation. You can fit six times more product with compostable bags versus a craft handle bag. Meaning, if you can fit one million bags of compostable bags in a trailer, you would need six times the number of trailers to fit craft handle bags to meet the same quantity. So instead of paying freight six times, you'd only have to pay it once, which is huge for any company. Savings that is. Stocking and storage. You can save more space by using six times less space to stock and store your compostable bags. Time and money. Because of the 6x factor, think about all the time that you can save with labor of unloading and stocking, not doing it six times, and not waiting for delivery lead time six times over, but just one container. Think about the speed of service to your distributors who want product now. For restaurants and retailers, stocking and storage. Now this is huge because you only have limited space under your retail counter. So if you had compostable bags, you can fit a case of 500 bags compared to a case of 250 craft handle bags. But look at the case size. A case of compostable t-shirt bags occupies only a quarter of the space of a craft handle bag. That's right. In other words, for the same space of the craft handle paper bag box that would take up under your counter, you can fit four boxes of compostable bags, which would give you a total of 2,000 bags versus 250. And what is 2,000 divided by 250? Eight. Not even a six factorial, an eight factorial. So time and money. If you choose to use craft handle bags, that means you also choose to spend eight times more on labor and time to replenish those craft handle bags compared to using compostable bags, which you could easily stock four cases under the counter that would last you eight times longer before replenishing. Transportation. Now, of course, with 8x, the replenishment rate would also mean that your supplier or distributor would have to send you bags eight times more frequently because you simply can't stock the same amount of volume of craft handled bags as you could if you use compostable bags. The end user who brings the bag home, they can repurpose this compostable bag and use it as a green bin liner at home. Do you remember earlier, we went through the definition of a plastic bag that is not impacted? That being, bags intended to hold organic waste meant for composting? So this is an interesting problem. Because by the way, the technical guidelines definition also says that PLA plastics is defined as plastic. And they conveniently noted that single use plastic checkout bags are prohibited and cannot be used or manufactured or imported or sold for this use, meaning the feds have decided to make your life more complicated and difficult as they allow PLA compostable bags for your waste bin liners, but not for checkout bags. Just think how convenient it would be if you didn't have to worry about buying a separate compostable bin liner for the green bin and simply reuse the compostable bag that you just used to bring home your groceries. Personally, it's such a no brainer to utilize compostable t-shirt bags, knowing that it's going to really fulfill its purpose, returning back to the environment and not contaminating the green bin program with plastic bags or spending any additional money on a separate bag made out of the same material that otherwise you don't need to spend. Take a deep breath, calm down. And of course the planet with all that we just analyzed, 
Think about the potential savings in terms of energy consumption on production, transportation, labor, and of course, our precious resources. If we just broadened our understanding of what the best practices in this category for all industries, people, and the planet really looks like. Now, on to something fun. As I mentioned earlier, we at Food Packaging TV have a special promo to offer you, your very own custom branded fabric bags that meets the SUP checkout ban. Do you want to have your own non-woven bags, aka fabric bags, but don't want to commit to 50,000 or 100,000 bags to do a custom print? Well, what if I told you you can get your own branded bags delivered straight to your door with a minimum of only 5,000 pieces? Or in other words, if you're using plastic bags today that are packed 1,000 in a case, your commitment level would only be five cases. If that wasn't great already, what if I could give you more peace of mind knowing that the supplier that we're going to be connecting you with is already making bags for Canadian companies such as Walmart, Sobeys, and Loblaws? We have worked a very special FPTV drop shipment program that is direct from the factory just for you so you can enjoy quality bags with your own brand on them with very low minimums. So what's the catch? Because there's always some sort of catch, right? Right. Well, the only catch here is that we have a long lead time. Not so much for the production of the bags because that's only 10 business days. However, the shipping time is approximately two months. But considering we're very early in the year, you have around seven to eight months from now to make this timely decision. If this sounds good to you, you can request a sample kit that includes a swatch book of all the colors that are available, two thicknesses, which are the 40 and 30 GSM quality of bags, four different bag sizes so you can physically understand the dimensions, and some samples of printed bags for your review. A sample kit is free, but you'd have to pay $45 US for the shipping. What does an average cost look like of a total package of 5,000 printed bags? Well, I'm glad you asked because it's around 850 Canadian. And these prices are all DDP, meaning delivery, duties, paid right to your door. For more details on how to get your ball rolling on this, simply comment I below with your email address and we'll get in touch with you. So don't delay. Comment I today. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of Food Packaging TV. My name is Dilaj P. Thank you so much for joining me. Next week, we're going to look at a series of MFPP containers and we're going to take you through the good, the bad, and the pretty. Please feel free to subscribe, share, comment, and like in between. And don't forget to say aye. And we'll see you next week. Be good. Be safe. Be blessed. Peace out.